What is up, YouTube? That's here today. We're bringing you guys a super cool VGC 2023 Series 2 team. Today, we're busting out Espathra with Skill Swap Hypnosis going into a No Guard Lycanroc with a Pseudo Raincore with Fling Kings Rock Raichu, Covert Cloak Pelipper, a Choice Specs Fluttermane, and a Breloom. This is a super crazy anti meta team. The rental code for this team is up on Patreon. Please think about checking that out. There's a link to it in the description. Even the $2 tier gets access to this rental team, a ton of other rental teams, as well as a write up on how. How to play these teams and i would greatly appreciate it if you guys took the time to go check it out but uh the question of the day you know we're using the new overlay so we can't actually show it is do you guys want me to show my team building and practice process for knoxville regionals knoxville regionals is coming up in a couple weeks at the end of february and i'm just curious do you guys want to see more serious stuff where i actually try my best to make myself the best player that i can possibly be and go into serious mode for the regional or do you just want memes? Or do you want to mix it both? Be wanting to mix it both is completely fine. I make these videos for your entertainment. So let me know what you want to see. And uh, without further ado, we're going to hop into some games and try and dumpster some high-level opponents with a super crazy meme team that uses some very niche picks. Wish me luck. Here we go. Right, so let's go into this first game. We see Palpin Amoongus and a little bit of Parish Trap. Parish Trap is a really popular team popularized by wolf glick who recently won the orlando regional championships i think parish trap is a very good type but a good tip for beating parish trap is having at least two pokemon of the ghost type to be able to pivot we see we have a ghost terra on our raichu here and we have our fluttermane which has ghost terra so if we were to lead raichu and fluttermane and protect them correctly we should theoretically be able to let them set Parish, go all in on Parish, and then pivot out correctly. Yes, this doesn't necessarily use our whole strategy of going as Pathra Lycanroc, but this is playing with the right strategy to win the game at hand. So I do think Raichu, or Raichu and Fluttermane is great. We can also fake out their Parish Trap user or their Parish Song user and just Oko with the big Fluttermane turn one. So really, really good stuff. Uh, remember, ghost types can always switch switch through shadow tag, so that's why this is so good. Let's see, what do we want to switch into, though? If we were to be switching in from a shadow ball, realistically, something like our Lycanroc could potentially be good because it has protect. And then I'm going to bring Espathra because I have faith in this Pokemon. I think it's really, really good. And I think the fact that we're still bringing Espathra Lycanroc means the strategy still has some merit in working. So hopefully this works. Again, Parish Trap is more all in than you actually would be led to believe at first sight. Just because Wolf won with it doesn't mean it's super, oh my goodness, broken. It's a strategy your opponent has to really overextend to execute. And if they waste three to four turns setting up a Parish, like if this guy goes, um, like, flip turn, perish into Gothitelle, like, that's fine, but if they waste three to four turns going for a perish with protecting and shadow tagging all that stuff, and we just hard switch on the last turn to something that blocks it, they wasted three to four turns, potentially lost one of their Pokemon in doing so. That's amazing for us. I actually think in this situation, Palpin is not worth respecting. We can actually just fake out the Screamtail and go for a Shadow Ball into that slot. If you want to pivot in your Gothitelle, that's cool. I'll just Shadow Ball the next Gothitelle slot. So this is fine. This is absolutely fine. You can 100% flip turn. I do not care. Jet Punch is also fine. We can eat this just fine. Look at our Eevee Spur. We're able to eat at least one more of those as well. So this is going to do a lot. Super effective specs Shadow Ball. And that's your Parish user. So it's like, as, like uh, I, I will say, Wolf Glick is an absolute expert at using Parish Trap. This person might not be as high of a level, but that doesn't also mean I'm also not a little bit of a high level myself. So being able to realize how we would stop that, we're absolutely fine. Even if they went for a Protect on the Screamtail, we would be able to the next turn Encore slash like fling into the... Palafin slot to stop like a stronger move from happening and then just double into the Screamtail slot. So we're absolutely fine. Actually, I think in this situation, what we can do is just hard Volt Switch. Volt Switch is another option that you can always do. You can always hard Volt Switch or U-turn into your own teammates to get out of a pin from a Parish Trap. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna Volt Switch super effective potentially into this Palafin as long as they're not critting us with that uh, Jet Punch, we are gonna be able to Shadow Ball this Gothitelle slot as well. And I think we're in a good spot. I think we are in a good spot. What they're going to be doing is going for a Water Terra Jet Punch. Great play. This will let them get the KO on our Fluttermane, but they're not really going to get as much out of this as they want. 
Good play for my opponent, by the way. I looked at what Terra I had. I have Rock Terra for a very unique situation. We go, for, oh, we actually have Pagot. Good play for my opponent as well. Um, but we're fine here. This should let them get the KO unless they really, really low roll, which is 100% possible. Absolutely fine. I don't think there's a problem with that. Good play for my opponent. They've shown their Terra. They've revealed their hand. And now we are the ones that are allowed to punish. Remember, we're, we were still a mon up, and we still have great options here. I think Espathra is amazing here. Um, let's see what they actually have. We're not threatened by any of this. We could fling things. We could even go for a Espathra. Watch this. Watch this sick play. Now wa watch what we do here. This is a little bit of a learning exercise here. Raichu is going to be faster than Espathra. So what we can do is Volt Switch and still get that amazing Volt Switch, still retain our Fake Out for when we want to come in later, still retain our King's Rock. Volt Switch into the Palfoam, which would do so much damage. And we can actually Skill Swap into that Raichu slot to immediately gain the No Guard upon bringing in our Lycan Rock. That would be so good for us. And we have Lycan Rock the Speed Boost to be able to go for absolutely massive Rock Slides, which is amazing. So let's go for the Skill Swap. Self-Target. Now, if they were to protect their Palafin and Trick Room here, that's something that we have to deal with, but I don't think that they really have the right board state to be a bully in this situation. Palafin with, um, without its zero to hero is just not going to be dealing the damage that they want. They, yes, they were able to take out our, our Flutter main, but I don't think it's going to be enough. They have to hard switch this slot out, and they don't have any ground types, if I remember correctly. They have a Moongus, which means we still are going to be able to Volt Switch here, setting up for a potential situation to loom in a crash that slot next turn. So Volt Switch in here. I love this. This is the best thing I've ever seen in my life. We're going to be able to immediately come in, right, with our Lycan Rock, which has the no guard ability, which we're skill swapping onto our Spathra and then giving our Lycan Rock a potential speed boost. So good. Able to go for those 100% accuracy hypnosises. That's what we want to do here. What a play. Oh my goodness. And again, you can go for the heal balls. You can do whatever you want. I think they were, um, they were heal pulsing in that slot, expecting me to Lumina Crash it. So right now, you can actually check our Spathra has no guard. No guard is Pathra. This is Hypnosis City out here. Hypnosis City. I think we just taunt the Amoongus. Or even taunt... What we, let's actually think about this. We would taunt the Amoongus because that would be the Pokemon that would be dark terrestrializing if possible. And let's just Hypnosis the Gothitelle. Easy peasy. Taunt stop Spore. Yes, they could potentially have Mentor, but that's fine. They hard switch out their Gothitelle. This slot's going to sleep, and that's another reason why you wanted to taunt the Amoongus, because that's a more obvious Pokemon that would be using a support move, so taunting the Amoongus is great. The Gothitelle is the Pokemon that would have been switching, which means it's a better slot to Hypnosis. Hip Hypno or Rage Powder happens, but this is absolutely fine. Because we did it just like this, they're now taunted and Hypnosis is, or Hypnosis Sleep Powder. They've already wasted one of their sleep turns, which means they have to, haven't even started their sleep uh, counter yet, and we can just Hypnosis the Palafin next turn. So good for us. Remember, our Lycanroc's getting a humongous speed boost here. The whole time we have speed boost here, which is great. And I don't think that Palafin has the potential to one-shot Espathra. I'm actually thinking about going for, like, Endeavor, soaking a Jet Punch, making them one, one HP, and then going for a Lumina Crash to finish off. I think that'd be really, really cool. I think I will just Rock Slide, though, and go for a Hypnosis into the Palafin slot. I do not think that that Palafin has the tools to one-shot Espathra with anything significant. This is a very, very bulky Espathra set. And yes, they are Water Terra. I think our Terrastalize is dark. Um, so it's not like we would be doing anything specifically to stop Palafin. We should be able to live Jet Punch. Yes, they have a very high base speed and can go for a Wave Crash. They take so much damage in doing that. Jet Punch shouldn't get the KO. We should be left at about... Oh, they are good. I, I, I wanted to talk about that. I, I did talk about it. The Endeavor would have been the right play here. We would have dropped them to one and then just be able to finish off with the Lumina Crash. They've been great. So Rock Slide's still great damage. Remember, they haven't even started their sleep turns on Amoongus, and now they haven't even started their sleep turns on the Palafin as well. Amazing stuff from us. And our Espathra, which is our main win condition here, is still at full HP. That's so amazing. So let's think about how we want to do this. Amoongus is also taunted still, so it cannot use Rage Powder. So if we go look at here, they're still taunted. Uh, actually, taunt just wore off. So they technically can Rage Powder. What we are going to do here is go for an Endeavor into that slot. What do I have in the back? I have Raichu in the back, which is amazing. And I'm just going to go for a Lumina Crash into... So we're endeavoring... We're going to endeavor the Palafin and just go for a Lumina Crash into the Amoongus slot. I think it's a fine play. 
Endeavor's gonna drop you to one HP, which is amazing. And you cannot wake up this turn with the uh, Palafin. Luminar Crash almost finishes that off. Unlucky. If they wake up here and KO our Lycanroc, that's unlucky. Remember, we have speed boost going on that slot. They had to be asleep last turn, but not this turn. So they do wake up unlucky. They go for a Pollen Puff to finish off our Lycanroc again. Very, very unlucky, but this actually will end up going towards our favor because we're going to be able to bring in Raichu and go for a fake out into the Palafin slot. So we're still technically okay. Um, they'd have to wake up Protect with their... Yeah, they can't. They can't. Uh, they, they can't stop this. I mean, they could wake up Protect. That's fine. I think we're still okay there. What is Raichu's Terra? I'm curious. We have Dark Terra on... on that one and we have ghost terror there so and not amazing terrors there but we're gonna be okay so we fake out here and just go for a lumina crash into the amoongus of the ko i'm curious though if we take out the palafin we do win the game um so they have to get a one turn sleep on both mons we got hypnosis on or so we have we had sleeps on both of them they have to get a one turn sleep on both of them to even have a shot to play this game and they have to be clicking protect this turn they hard switch out the Palafin. That's a potentially very good play. They're going to be foddering the Amoongus slot to potentially set up for a position where Gothitelle can work. They get the Protect there. That's, that's a unique play. I don't know how I feel about that. Because in this situation, Raichu is faster than... Um, Raichu's faster than my... Uh, as Pathfinder. I don't know if they know that. Maybe they should have known. Because what we can do right here is we can just then go... Volt switch into the Amoongus and just another Hypnosis. How would this... There's There shouldn't be a situation where this fails, right? You have Fake Out. That means I have to Ghost Terra. Yeah, that works. So if we Ghost Terra here, we stop the Fake Out into our Raichu. And we're still always able to kill the Amoongus. Amoongus will always go down. Worst case scenario, if you Fake Out of my Espathra... I'm not paralyzed. I'm not sleep on your Gothitelle. And next turn I can just go for fling KO into your uh, Palafin. It's a good play for me. Cool. So you're going to be fake out my Raichu here. The big brain. Professional Pokemon player difference from that's a plus one. Ghost Raichu is good. Ghost on your fake out users is good. If you fake out the Espathra, I'm still KOing your Amoongus. And the fact that I'm KOing your Amoongus sets up for the fact that your Palafin cannot stop both my moms at once. So I think this is a great play. Fake out. You do fake out the Espathra, which is, I, I would say, your best option here. But you have two Mons. Your, your Palafin's fighting a 1v2 here. And I do not see a situation where your Gothitelle can win versus both. If I double into your Palafin slot, there should not be a way that you win this one. I can also, like, Encore your uh, Gothitelle loop now, too. I could go for Sleep Powders into it. I can Encore loop it. There's so many different things I can do here. Palafin the Chosen One. Even if you were to trick room me here, I think I still win. I, I do not see a situation where you, you win here. Volt Switch, Raichu outspeeds Palpins. You have to be going for a Jet Punch. You can go for a Protect Trick Room, a Protect Psychic. I don't see a situation where you get this. I just don't. Show me. Show me what you're working with. Show me your skills. Show me your potential for outplays. Raichu might have more of a problem dealing with Gothitelle than Espathra would. But Palafin is also still asleep. Like, it had to go for a one-turn sleep wake-up there. We go for a Volt Switch. We don't even want to go for the Hypnosis there. We just wanted the guaranteed KO. It doesn't matter what this Gothitelle is because it's all alone. And we are going to get the KO on Palafin. We're going to redirect the Lumina Crash into the Gothitelle, dropping its special defense stat by two, making so both of our attacks do even more damage next turn. And we're in a great spot here. Just because just because Wolf won with Parish Trap doesn't mean it's an easy-to-play archetype. And uh, there's so many tools at a lot of players' disposal for taking this uh, format out. Um, they went for the Psychic here. We don't technically have to reveal the Fling, so I won't. I'd actually actually want to go for the um, Hypnosis here to see if they have Lumberry. So at this point, we're just gauging more info from them. So Volta, which is going to do a ton of damage, it might even get the KO. Uh, Lumina Crash would have gotten the KO, but at this point, I want to see what item they have. At this point, them staying in the game is a misplay because they're showing me what their item is in a closed team sheet format. Hypnosis goes into it. They already showed the Citrus Berry, which means they cannot have a Lumberry or a Chesto Berry. And we are able to get this KO without even revealing any more of our info on our team. We didn't have to reveal our fling. We didn't have to reveal anything. So really, really good stuff. We are able to win this team with the exact leads that we started out with. And... Uh, Feels great, man. Feels great to actually play a meme team against a core that just won a regional and come out like 
easily on top. Anyone can play against teams that even regional champions use if you take the right approach to the matchup. So hopefully you guys learned something from this game and uh, we're gonna go play a couple more because this team has a lot more tools in store and I can't wait to show them. Alright, this is another team that won, I think, an online tournament recently. This is one of my favorite cores right now. Grim, Arcanine, Iron Hands, Corviknight. I don't think there's a more defensive core that's harder to outplay. This person's basically saying, you gotta be this tall to ride, and they think they're better than me by playing a core like this. So, we're gonna try our best to outplay this, and I think one way to outplay it is to use Raichu. I'm gonna show a little bit of a clinic on how to use this Pokemon correctly right now. I think Raichu is the sauce that we need to outplay this core. Raichu Breloom is what I'm gonna go with for this game. I could even go Raichu Pelipper for this game, but I don't, yeah, I will go Raichu Pelipper actually. Raichu Pelipper is amazing here. I'm gonna bring my Fluttermane in the back. I don't know if I'll need it, but the Power Gem is great for Arcanine. What we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be trading Fake Outs. We're gonna trade effectively because we have a Covert Cloak, and then we're going to Encore our opponent into fake out or fling if we need to fling at this point we have speed control we have better speed tiers and we need one mod on the back that's good for taking out our opponents in the late game i'm gonna bring the breloom just because this core struggles a lot with the gastrodon it's almost like our course actually made to play the game it's almost like we play the game here let's see how we do um i think in terms of what a good player should be using for tournaments a very defensive core that can pivot have good uh, ability for screens, good speed control, good defensive typing. Our opponent's team has it. Like, that's the core that I'm actually thinking about using for Knoxville Regionals right there. It's like Grim Arcanine with hands. Very, very good stuff here, but look at this board. This is amazing for us. What I really like about this is we can Anchor Loop that Grim and punish that Arcanine all day. We're going to fake, we're going to trade if fake outs if they want to. If they want to trade fake outs, what we're doing is we're going to fake out this Arcanine. So that means they can't snarl, right? 100% unless they're Covert Cloak, which again, if this is open team sheet, we'd be able to see it. But since it's not open team sheet, we can't, it's fine. We're then going to be able to Encore Loop that Grim into whatever we want. If they go for a screen, we can Encore Loop it. If they want to go for a Spirit Break, we can Encore Loop it. If they want to go for a fake out into either of these slots, we can still Encore Loop it and we have Covert Cloaks, so we're fine. I'm going to be going for a Hurricane into the Arcanine slot. The key is getting damage on Arcanine in this matchup, not Grim. Grim's not as big of a problem as you might think. And note that our Pelper doesn't have Tailwind. We don't need it. Our Pelper is made to sit on the board and just be a bulky guy. They go for a light screen, and that's fine. We can Encore Loop that next turn and punish this Arcanine slot. Arcanine is always going to be slower than Raichu, so we can Encore the Arcanine if they want to do something weird too. Like if they would have protected, we could Encore Loop that too. That's a full HP Spadef Arcanine or at least heavy HP spadef. Our Pelipper should be doing more damage even through a light screen with that. So that's one thing that's very, very important to note. I want to note also as well, they would have just let themselves eat a Hydro Pump there. That's crazy. That's absolutely ridiculous. What we're going to do is Encore here, and we want to think about what move they're using. They're probably using Snarl here. So I'm going to hard switch in my Breloom, and the next year I'm going to fling that Arcanine and put it to sleep. Great play from us. So that Grim's going to be stuck using whatever move they use here. They can totally reflect. I, I cannot stop their screens, but I can still punish them for using it. Encore, they're trying to attack. They're stuck using Light Screen, which means they don't get a reflect, which means our Bellum is in a good spot. And what are they going to do? Flare Blitz into a Pelipper spot? I doubt it. Snarl is what we talked about before. They miss on one. They might still think that we're Sash, which is very, very nice. So there's two things we can do here. We can go for a fling into the Arcanine and put, go for a sleep. They can totally terastalize into grass here, which is a very common Arcanine type. Or what we can do is we can just encore them into Snarl because why do we care of what a Snarling Arcanine does? We Snarl here, we spore the Grimstrong slot. They shouldn't have a Pokemon that switches in on that. They have no Pokemon that switches in on that Snarl. Or sorry, on that spore. Yeah. It, it is possible for me to play the game correctly, believe it or not. It's so hard to play this game while streaming, while doing tournaments and other stuff like that. The only thing that stops us here is safety goggles or Lum, which are two common items on on uh, Corviknight. But Corviknight doesn't want to deal with a Raichu either. Like, I can Volt Switch in that slot, re-bring back out, repin. There is the Grass Terra, just like we said, which is why I encored it, because I'm so freaking good. Yeah. When I get serious about tournaments, man, when I get serious about going into tournament mode, it's almost like I play the game. So, you're stuck using Snarl, which is okay versus Raichu. But, uh, we're okay here. And that Corviknight's 
it looks like actually the Corviknight should have already been going to sleep. Uh, actually, uh, it's a weird, the weird thing to say. I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about this in depth. If you actually go back and rewind the video, you would have saw that the second they switched that Corviknight in, the way that Scarlet and Violet is coded, Corviknight should have actually been put to sleep way before we used the move. Um, and the fact that its eyes were open that whole time means that it was holding an item that stopped it from getting put to sleep. So that means it was always goggles, which is not something that's easy to notice, but like that extra 30 seconds of knowing is an extra 30 seconds of setting up next turn strategy. So really good uh, tech from our opponent actually having the safety goggles on there. Um, we're just gonna pivot out and there's not really a reason for me to do anything here. I'm actually gonna double pivot and bring in Breloom on my left hand side, I think. Or even bring in my Flutter main to be able to get the Arcanine off the board. Good play from our opponent, though. Safety Goggles Corviknight is a great play. Just shows exactly that this team knows what they need to win. But they do not have leftovers, which means we can big punish them with critical hits to that Snarl. Like, we do be taking those. If I didn't want to crit, I wouldn't have went for it. So, we do be taking those. We reset our fake up for a little bit later. They should be going for a, gra a flying attack into my... Um, Pelipper. And they're also stuck snarling with Arcanine. They didn't switch, so I'll just bring in the Broma back on this slot. Soak that snarl. Potentially re-KO the Corviknight with a neutral life orb boosted um... <laughs> they missed on Pelipper. That's funny, because they don't know where Sa or Sash or not Sash. It's great! Um, let's see what the Corviknight's doing. You can totally tail one. I don't really care. There's the Iron Head. Awesome. So, in this situation, remember, we went well out of our way to condition our opponent into going Grass Terror Arcanine so we could just set up this KO with Pelipper. This should get the KO here. Remember, their Grim Snarl is still in the back. What else do they have? Because they showed Grim, Arcanine, Corviknight, they have to have some damage here. I doubt they would bring Iron Hands to beat um, Espathra Raichu. It's probably Gastrodon to beat Pelipper. So I'm thinking it's Gastrodon or, or Sylveon, or my guesses. And we have great tools versus both of them. So we're just gonna go for the Mach Punch KO the Corviknight, and I don't think we can KO here. Oh, for some reason I thought we didn't have Tailwind. Um, we don't necessarily need Tailwind in this situation, but, uh, yeah, we don't need Tailwind here. We outspeed everything about this team. That's the thing that's, that's the thing about this team. It doesn't have enough speed control to actually be a threat in most situations. And, uh, this is gonna be good damage for Scrim. I'll take a, I'll take a potential para. Great damage there. Now, our Mach Punch also goes before Grim can set a reflect. Getting off Arcan off the board is humongous. That's so big. Hurricane, good damage here as well. Oh my gosh, a second crit. Oh, we take those. Donation accepted. Thank you. Rain stops. Pelver will switch out next turn. Bravo and Kabapa protect. We bring back in our Raichu relatively safe. I want to see if there's going to be Sylveon here. If it is Sylveon, we'll drop a double protect and then a spore into that slot. It is Arcanine. Maybe we should have, maybe we should have went for a... Actually, I can probably just go protect Breloom. Tailwind. Into... It's hard to say. I don't want to go for any raw hurricanes. I do not want to make that play. We have steals here. I forgot. It's a good defensive Terra in some situations. Returns on White Swing, so they're a light clay. I will protect here, and I will go for a Tailwind. I think this is a relatively safe Tailwind to let us outspeed at least Arcanine with some of these mods. Arcanine has a 95 base speed. It's much faster than Breloom. They're probably not expecting Breloom to be this bulky. I don't care if you snarl. Okay, I, that means I could have switched in Raichu here. That's uh, one thing worth noting, to catch them in a lock there. I'm gonna see what they're using with, with uh, Grim. Spirit Break? It's fine. Spirit Break's a good play here. Okay. We outspeed what they're worth right now. And they did intimidate our Breloom. So we could trade Breloom, lock them into Flare Blitz, and repel them with Fluttermane, and then probably win the game. I don't mind that. We Spore here. So we Spore Grim, and we pivot to Raichu to get a fake out pin. I like this. And this is going to be waiting out the rest of their um, light screen. And if they go for any defensive play at all, we Encore Loop it. I love this. Worst case scenario, you... you uh, yep, that's fine. I don't care about that. We're going to be using special attacks the rest of the game anyways. Cool. So that Grim hasn't even started its sleep room. So we actually do not need to care about the Grim Strong for the remainder of the game. Super important. You can kill one of our mons that unlocks our Flutter main to be able to come out and win the game, and you take chip damage. Great trade, in my opinion. Remember, we think they have either Gastrodon or Sylveon in the back. We can actually Encore Loop the Gastrodon into whatever we want. We haven't even shown our Terra yet. So I think Flutter main is great here. We have a Fake Out. We have a Volt Switch. Both of our mons are faster than Arcanine. 
This is great. This is the last turn of their light. They have, what is it? Last turn of light screen. So the correct play is to fake out Arcanine, and if they protect, we can Encore Loop. So that means we actually want to Dazzle and Gloom here to do damage to both. But there's nothing really wrong with just doubling into Arcanine because Grim has to be asleep. I'll, I'll do this play because I want the Grim off the board. If they protect the Encore Loop, they pivot, which is the correct play, I think. But then they'll be stuck without a... Uh... Yeah, this is still fine for us. Sylveon is a good play here. We can fling either of those Mons here, and they don't know that we have it. We can also technically even flinch with the... Uh... We can technically flinch with the uh, Volt Switch too, but we'll see if it comes to that. Grim goes down. Sylveon's very thick. But they've already terra right? So let's see what we want to do. We have Rock Terra on our Flutter Mate because we're straight, we're straight busted out here. I think Rock Terra is actually still very good in some matchups. We should be able to KO the Arcanine with the double up, but I don't want to activate a Pinch Berry. We have Pelipper that can 100% check the Arcanine, which means if we check Sylvia and we win the game. No reason to do that, Terra. If anything protects, we win. If Sylveon protects and they flare puts our right shield, we still bring up Helper and win. No protects, okay. Good damage. Let's see if we're proccing an Arcanine Berry. Maybe they had a different item that I didn't see before, but I like the fling here. It sets up for the win next turn. You can only KO potentially one of our Mons, and this automatically flinches a Pokemon. Flare Blitz shouldn't KO. Wow! That's a is that a crit? I mean, I've crit you a couple times. Great damage from them, by the way. Really, really good stuff, but this still should get us the win because now their Arcanine's KO'd. Good play from them. Um, I'm surprised that Arcanine actually has enough investment. This just goes to show how high level of an opponent we're actually playing in this game. They have all of their EV spreads on point. They have all of their defensive typing on point. Their pivots on point. But like, I built this team to potentially practice for regionals. So you know what I mean? Like, it makes sense that it would do well. At this point, we can just go for um, so many different things. We can just go Volt Switch and Hurricane. Should We should be able to get it. I think this should be it. I don't know if we outspeed Sylveon here, but we have Hurricane there, and Raichu's also Ghost Terror, so there's nothing else to do. We should be able to get both these Mons into that slot and get the win. Volt Switch, I don't think it's a KO, but Pelipper is slower than Sylveon. Hangs on by a thread. If they would have crit us there on both of the slots, they would have been able to get the win, but it was the best that I could do. I think that was still the best play that I had. Um... We will take that. It's better than protecting with any of these mons and potentially letting one of our mons get KO'd so they can go for a hyper voice, which is a single target attack on the other. So good play for me, and we'll take those wins all the way to the bank. Like, this team can be played. It actually just goes to show that any team can be played on even the higher parts of the ladder if you take the time to think about it and be deliberate with every single one of your choices. If you guys want to use this team, the rental code is up right now on Patreon, as well as the Pokepaste, as well as a small write-up on how to play this team and a bunch of other teams. I think, actually, I have over 500 teams going back multiple generations of Pokemon on Patreon. So if you're ever, like, stuck understanding, like, what sets you should use for what Pokemon, or you want inspiration on how to play a specific type of Pokemon, Think about checking out the Patreon. Even the $2 tier gets access to every single one of those teams, access to the Discord, access to the tournaments we're hosting this month, as well as the team fixing posts. So think about checking those things out, and hopefully you, like this, hopefully you guys like this video. If you did, let me know by leaving a like and a comment. And other than that, thank you guys for watching so much, and uh, I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.